after heading east once more, we'll leave Blaken behind us. But before we do, there's just one thing to point out. And that's these houses just over here, although you can't really see them very well from here. I'll put a picture from the front side on. And over the original staff cottages built when the railway and Blaken station was built back in the 1870s, I believe it was. So every now and then the cycle path for some reason is raised above the original track bed and this is one of those occasions, it's a bit difficult to see possibly on the camera but if you look as I walk backwards you can see a bit of a ridge down there and what you can also see here is the track bed seems to widen so we've got one embankment that side and one there so it's quite wide. The reason for that is because this was where the junction for the siding went into Blaken and you get a better indication there you can see how the, the cycle path is raised I'm standing on the original track bed now so let's carry on so coming out of the cuttings in the Blaken area we're now on a little bit of an embankment as you can see there um, we also come to our first bridge since leaving Blaken. The first of four underbridges in a row this and this is a bridge crossing Blaken Hall Road. Quite a nice stone bridge. Uh, better than some of the others I can mention. Let's just take a quick peek over the edge and there you go that is Blaken Hall Road. So we're now arriving at the next of our underbridges. Now this one, a little bit more interesting. We haven't got a road under here. What we do have is a canal. And there it is. The Shropshire Union Canal to be precise. And that way leads us to Ellesmere Port and ultimately the Manchester Ship Canal and Liverpool and Manchester. Whereas if I cross to the other side, a little bit bright with the sun but that way it takes us into Chester and if you remember I'd done a video regarding the D-lock and the old port of Chester I'll put a link up in the, the, the top of the screen for you look at that, isn't that beautiful? Hi pigeons This next bridge has a bit of an anomaly around it. Now the line here closed in 1992 before being mothballed for a while until it was lifted prior to the Millennium Greenway being constructed and that opened in 2000. However, the road which this bridge spans, the A5480 or Deverling, wasn't opened until the early to mid 90s. So it's highly possible that despite being built to carry a railway, no train has ever passed over it. Now, because of its recent build, it appears um, a very unremarkable affair. Although uh, these bolts, which appear to have been shorn off at the top, are quite intriguing. Um, I'm wondering if there used to be a fence or a guard on there. Now also, if you look over there, um, there's another bridge. Now that, I'm having real sunlight issues again here. I'll move across and see if I can get a better shot. Oh, slightly better. Anyway, that bridge is in fact an aqueduct and it was built at the same time as our railway bridge. Now that is in 
carrying the Shropshire Union Connect, uh, which we saw just a moment ago. So in front of us we have another one of those fluctuations between cycle path and track bed levels. Our railway embankment continues on the left, but I'm not entering those brambles or bushes. Um, and as you can see our cycle path drops down a few feet, probably to accommodate an access path to the Diva Link and the canal. So coming out of our dip, we get back onto track level. Here's our embankment levelling out again. And we come up to another bridge. But before we get to the bridge, I want to point something out. Now I stumbled across this not too long ago. And I've walked down here so many times. And I've never seen this up until about six or seven months ago. It must have been hidden by the trees. But look at that. We have a signal post. How brilliant is that? In fact, let's... Unfortunately, you can't see the, the gantry arm because there's a branch in the way. Let's see if we can... Fortunately, someone's been cutting back the trees here, so uh, let's better look at that. What a lovely relic. Probably the best I've seen. And it looks like there's a nest at the end of the arm there. Well, this next bridge we come to is a little bit unique regarding underbridges on this line as a divider has been provided between the up and down lines. Now I'm not quite sure the reason for that. Um, I'll take the left side. Now this bridge crosses the very busy Parkgate Road, a major route from Chester into the Wirral. Now I'm sure this isn't the original bridge, it's made of steel and I think, yeah look, uh, brick abutments. And that pretty much proves that an earlier structure rested here. Um, that, that's a rather interesting thing, that looks like the bottom of a piece of rail, but the, the top of the head has been cut away, I wonder what that was, was it a, did it have a notice on it, a board or something? Very odd. So we're now arriving at the next station, which is Liverpool Road. On my right, you would have found on the other side of this fence, Liverpool Road signal box, obviously long since gone. Coming up on our left, where the path deviates away, now this area was known as Queensgate, or is known as Queensgate I should say. It's now a residential road, but uh, when the railway was here, I've looked at the maps and according to the maps and as far as I can make out, this was the road entrance to uh, Liverpool Road station sidings. So our cars would have come up here and here where there is now a car park we'd have had sidings and yards. So let's go back to the main track. Let's pause here a moment and look at a map because I think there's quite a bit going on now. And before we get onto Liverpool Road Station proper I'll have a look at the bits and pieces we've already investigated. Now if you look at uh, our map from the National Library of Scotland as always. Here is Parkgate Road. This is the last bridge before Liverpool Road Station. <clears throat> now as I walked east I pointed out the signal box that's there. Unfortunately there's a, a fence in the way so you can't see through that. And you remember the Queensgate area? Well that's this bit here coming off Parkgate Road. See it coming up here and into our yards, which would have been found here. Now, incidentally, for trains travelling east, the last crossing place to get over onto the Northgate platforms would have been to the west of Liverpool Road. 
Um, so this is our last point of crossing. So once you're in the platforms, you're going to either Northgate or towards Mickle Trafford. Okay, so let's get back to uh, our film. The Liverpool Road, probably the most substantial station on the line apart from Northgate. We had four platforms at Liverpool Road. So on that side, we had the platforms to and from Northgate. And on that side, we had platforms to and from Mickle Trafford. Now, where the station is today, there is absolutely nothing. Now I'm gonna go into the trees and see if there's anything there's a bit of concrete over there which is probably something to do with the station possibly platform edge hard to tell maybe i think that's something to do with the railway but impossible to tell unless someone else can tell me so on our left we have a car park that belongs to a leisure center stroke swimming pool and ahead of us we have a bridge and that carries Liverpool Road giving the station its name despite it being an interchange station it was very underused and probably due to its close proximity to Northgate and also good external road transport and because of this it closed to passengers in 1951 the first permanent station on the line to close and then also to goods in 1965. Let's uh, have a look in the undergrowth, see if there's anything interesting. There's more concrete, also brambles. I'm sure the concrete is got to be bits of station. There's all the modern rubbish in there. The trouble is where it's been cleared out completely for the cycle path. I think rather than we're an abandoned line, it's just left, this has been totally cleared. So obviously where I'm standing now would have been the up and down Northgate platforms. But I can't see anything at all. As we close on the footbridge, I've noticed to my right in the trees, a substantial amount of uh, wood, rotting wood. Now, could they be sleepers? It's hard to tell. I think they possibly could. Anyway, we come to Liverpool Road Bridge. Now, right now, I would have been bang in the midst of the station. Our platforms, well, I would be walking pretty much where uh, the Mickle Trafford bound platform would have been. So, you know, our uh, Northgate platforms would have been over there. And you can see by the bridge, it splits into two, and that shows just how wide it was to accommodate the four tracks. Incidentally, if you look at the bridge, I'll just come up to it. The parapet up there, you can see the two columns there and there, and again up there. That offers a little bit of confusion because according to the maps, the entrance to the station was up there. So you come in, there would have been a booking office around here and then you would have entered the station and come down onto the platforms via a footbridge around here. However, some sources say, and it does look credible, that that, because it sticks out like that, was the footbridge. Anyone know? Let's have a look in here. Very interesting. Oh, that's handy because the gate's open that side. So I'll just go have a look in a minute. So, return once again to the National Library of Scotland, this time a modern day view for the moment. Now, uh, our station, Liverpool Road, is in this tree area here. You can see Liverpool Road quite clearly there. Now, the building here, which oddly enough looks like a church but isn't. That's our swimming pool stroke sports centre. Um, and here's the car park, which the multi-storey car park, which we walked along. So we came from this direction, which is towards Blaken and Chester, moving east. Um, and our yards would have been found all in this area here. 
Now, if we take the map back to 1898, and there we get a perfectly clear view of what's going on. So once again, we've got Liverpool Road going from north to south here. And here's our station. So here you can see the signal box that I pointed out and the, and the yards, etc. Coming in, we've got our four platforms. And over here, where our sports centre swimming pool is, we've got our yards. Now, here we have our station platforms. This one here, I believe, was number four. And that was for trains travelling to Mickle Trafford and Manchester. Uh, the next one, platform number three, was for trains from Manchester to Mickle Trafford. That was travelling towards Blaken. Platform number two was for trains travelling towards Chester Northgate. And platform one was trains from Chester Northgate travelling west towards Blaken and out towards Wales. Now, the footbridge anomaly. Here's our little footbridge so-called so parapet thing. There's something marked on the map there, look. So it could be a footbridge. But if you look here on Liverpool Road, here's our station entrances here. So you've got one there and one going in there. I'm assuming this is... A ticket office so you come into there get your ticket walk down here and then what you've got here is clearly a footbridge to the four platforms so although i've heard in a couple of sources that this was a footbridge and the gap on top of the columns of the 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 bridge certainly does look so it could have contained a footbridge at one point there's nothing clear in this map so I'd love, I'd love some clarification on that so what we're going to do now see this foot this footpath here in a sort of a cutting this is the original um footpath to the yard and i would imagine you could probably get on the platform we're going to walk up there because that still exists and we're going to go out onto liverpool road and we're going to see if we can find the station entrances or anything pertaining to the station entrances. So we're going to briefly move away from the the line, and we're going to walk up this path. Now to the left of me is a car park. That's the car park to and the uh, swimming pool that sits here, and that's also the site of the goods yard and sidings. On my right, you can see an embankment. Now I think that that's original. This one I'm walking along now would have been the pedestrian entrance to the goods yard. And that would have come out to approximately here at the corner of the building, right up to the edge of the car park. It's quite a wide uh, goods yard, but only three or four tracks at most. So wide for its size. But I'm walking further up here and I'm now moving onto Liverpool Road itself. And I'm going to cross onto Liverpool Road. We're going to go over the bridge and we're going to see what we can find of any remains of the station from up there. So I'm up on Liverpool Road now. There's our footpath down there going towards the yard. Once again, we've got the sun in straight in our vision, which isn't helping at all. But we're going up over the, the, the line now on Liverpool Road itself. That seems to be very good at filming at the moment with the sun directly in our field of vision, which doesn't help me and it doesn't help you. Well, that's handy it's gone beyond a building right so we're coming over the top of the bridge now let's lift the camera up a bit so there's our track bed I'm going to look for any signs of entrance to the station. 
Now, the northern entrance would have been found exactly there where that post box and that other grey box are. But it doesn't appear to be anything. So our booking office would have been pretty much where that house is now. There would have been another entrance hit here, along with the one just over there. Obviously everything's lost now, but this is pretty much where it was. And obviously Dawson Drive didn't exist in those days.